Welcome to Have Guitar Will Travel, presented by Vintage Guitar Magazine, with your host, me, James Patrick Regan, otherwise known as Jimmy from the Deadlies. And today I'm speaking with guitarist Johnny Johnson. Johnny grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and with humble roots, ended up as the guitarist for a time with Earth, Wind, and Fire, and currently the guitarist for Boys to Men. In our conversation, we cover growing up in Milwaukee, wanting to be Tito from the Jackson 5 his gear early on, and the support of his parents. Getting the gig with Earth, Wind & Fire the day after 9-11. Leaving Earth, Wind & Fire and auditioning and getting the gig with Boys to Men, playing tour dates and at the residency at the Mirage in Las Vegas. His gear with Boys to Men. His casual gig with his own R&B band at Sugar Daddy Cigar Bar in Las Vegas. His work on Eric Benet's album, Sometimes I Cry, and his current guitar collection. Johnny keeps a low profile on the internet, but you can find out more about him at boysdemen.com. That's B-O-Y-Z-I-I-M-E-N.com. Please like, comment, and most of all, share this podcast. I'd really appreciate it. And please support Vintage Guitar Magazine and all the wonderful things they do for us guitar players, because they do so many wonderful things for us guitar players. Here's Johnny. Hey, Johnny, how are you? All right, how about you? Good, thank you. Uh, where are you located? I'm in Vegas. Oh, you're in Vegas? Very good. Yeah. How are things in Vegas as far as COVID? Uh, it's been up and down. They're trying to open up 100%, but it's not there yet. But no. Yeah, they're trying. Yeah, exactly. Are you able to uh, to play at all? Yeah, I'm doing some work on the weekends, some weekend stuff. Okay. Hey, with Boys to Men or with uh, or just your own stuff? Uh, just local stuff. Boys to Men, they have some dates show up in... I believe August we got a few dates showed up. In the U.S. or outside of the U.S.? Yeah, I'll be in the U.S. Cool. Where did you grow up? Uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee, Wisconsin? Did you start playing guitar at what age? Uh, i say around 12 years old. Oh, really? Very good. And who were you listening to back then? Uh, back then, it had to be like the Jackson 5. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> I right. wanted to be Tito. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> what kind of guitar were you playing when you first started? It was like, a, I believe it was an Epiphone. Uh-huh. It looked like it had a Gibson headstock with a Strat body. Oh, really? Okay, very cool. And and what kind of amp? Did you have an amp to start with? <clears throat> I think that was a Ampeg. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> did you play guitar in school? I did, actually. In, um, in high school, I was in a high school band. And uh-huh. We kind of moved around from school to school playing, you know, little gigs here and there. Yeah. What did During your lunch? <laughs> what did your folks do? Uh, my mom worked at, at a bank, uh-huh. and my dad worked at American Motors. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, AMC. Mm-hmm. Did they encourage you playing guitar when you were young? Oh, definitely. It was definitely supportive. Oh, good. My dad buying a band for the band to you know move around in. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Did your were your parents musical at all? So my mom said that my dad played a little guitar and he, he's, he's somewhat of a dancer. Uh huh. And how how old were you when you started playing in bands? Apart from high school bands, that is, or your high school jazz band? Uh, I would say around pretty much at the age of twelve, man. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> That's great. And you were playing guitar right out of the gate. Started on drums and. My twin brother played guitar, but we would come home from school and switch instruments, and I got better at the guitar, and he got better at drums, so we just switched. That was, that was what our Christmas presents. Okay. Were you were, So when you were playing in a band, were you playing with your brother? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you got out of high school, were you still playing in bands? Did you start in a day job, or did you, or were you just playing bands right out of the gate? Yeah, we were, I was doing bands and, you know, had a day job. Uh-huh. I, you know, I moved around a lot. It was, a lot of temporary stuff because I knew at a young age what I wanted to do. So, uh-huh. yeah, so I didn't stick all my eggs in one basket when it came to those jobs. When you started playing professionally, were you still playing the Epiphone, or did you did you move on to a different guitar? I moved to Fender Strat. Uh huh. Are you still playing Fender Strats now? I play a lot of different ones. You know, Yamaha. Uh huh. Still Fender Strats. I had some Gibsons, Parry, PRS. You know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, just a bunch of. Uh, variation, just a lot of different ones. How did you go from playing in, in local bands to playing in Earth, Wind, and Fire? I actually moved to Vegas 
a friend of mine was playing out here. He had his own band where they portrayed the Temptations in the show. Uh -huh. But they also played in the casinos after the show. He came to Milwaukee looking for a guitar player. And I was like, I'm the guy. <laughs> right on. Came out here, you know, years later, I met the MD for Earth on the Fire. Just uh, changed numbers. You know how that goes. You never think anything's going to come of it, but you do it anyway. Yeah. About a month later, I was getting a call. This was actually around 9-11. That's oh, when right. all that was going on. And I got a call on that well, the day after 9-11. Uh-huh. Wow. So, yeah, I thought it was a joke, but it turned out to be real. That's great. That's fantastic. So, obviously, 9-11 kind of screwed everything up for a little while, but how long was it before you got you were out gigging with, with Earth, Wind & Fire? I believe my first gig was with them was that December. The, the following December was my first gig. Right on. And were you pretty much nonstop touring with those guys? I toured with them for about three years, yeah. Three or four years. Yeah. Uh -huh. Did you play on any records as well? No, 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 no records. No records. Just, just the touring guitars. Yeah. So, just so that's that's fantastic. That's great. Why did you leave with playing with them? Well, another the other keyboarders ended up taking the MD position, and he brought in some of his own. Guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's too bad. And anyway, so, what did you what did you end up doing? Were you living in Vegas at that time? Yeah, I was. Uh huh. What'd you end up doing? I ended up working with a friend of mine, Eric Bernay. Wow, well, then from there, I ended up with the boys. Auditioned for the boys and been with them ever since. To, like before, before COVID all all came around, what was your what's your touring schedule like with Boys to Men? Oh, we toured we toured a lot. But they also have the um, the home gig here in Vegas, residency at the Mirage. So if you're not there, tour the so it was a pretty quick set. pretty good. And, and with the boys, what kind of rig are you using with them? Uh, he's the Offender Strat, and that's the Boogie, and I have just some pedal board that I kind of put together. You know. what, what, what's on your pedal board? Is it reasonable? To, is it a pretty reasonable board, or, or how, how big? I have a couple. I have a small one with a mini pedal, the one I travel with. Uh huh. When we were stationed, I used a slightly bigger one. Yeah. You know, distortions. Boosters, delay, chorus, just a bunch of stuff that I hardly use. Sure. <laughs> Probably use about three of them. <laughs> is, there, like the is, is there a distortion you prefer? I'm using the OCD. I have a bunch of different ones. I just kind of like them, whether, whether I like the color or the, the just like, it depends on what I have on it, like distortion, tone, bass, treble, and I like the ones that has the mid. You get little EQs in them. So it, it, I, I got a few of them. They vary. I couldn't even tell you the name of them right now. Uh huh. That's fine. <laughs> OCD, you know. Yeah, of course. Which which model Mesa Boogie are you using? Uh, the Long Star. Oh, the Long Star. A great amp. Uh, are you doing solo gigs as well in Vegas? Not really solo. I mean, we have it's usually three to four pieces. Uh huh. What kind of music are you playing with that? It's like R and B, some jazz. It's a variety. Uh huh. Have it there on a place called Sugar Daddy Cigar Bar. Did, uh, did you play on any on any of the boys' uh, records? No, their records either. Oh. I was Air Grenade CD. Uh -huh. I sometimes I cry CD. Sometimes I cry. Mm -hmm. Are there any people that you listen to right now, like uh, other guitar players that you like li listening to? Oh, there are many. Well, for a long time, it was Mike Stern. Uh huh. You know, well, that was that would be the fusion side with Neil Sean, Rock Side, Steve Lukather, George Benson. It's a it's a whole list. How large is your is your guitar collection? Uh, not, it's really not that large. I would say about twelve. Uh huh. Any highlights for you of, of the collection? Uh, not really. I've been playing Strats for so long. You uh -huh. know, I get room, so I switch them out frequently. You know. Do you seek out vintage guitars at all, or n not really? Not really vintage, not really. I mean, I, I love them. Played a few. There was a, a store out here called Cowtown Guitars. They used to play a lot of I just go in there and play them. You know, of course, a lot of them out of my price range. I just go and feel them. And a lot of them I get with um, a lot of strats. Some of them are, are used. I just go in the guitar center, find them nice and it feels good. You know, you're going to do your own thing with them. Where you just switch out the pickups or whatever. Sure. Yes, I find that actually sounds great and then I won't touch it, you know. Yeah. And the the Paul Reed Smith model that you that you use, what is that? I said I didn't own it. I would um 
on the gigs that I play, uh-huh. it would be on the on the list. You know, my um, the writer. Uh huh. Yeah. So, but I, I I did like that John Mayer a lot. Sure. Sure. That's nice. I played one of those recently. <laughs> yeah. How often do you guys do fly dates? I'm, I'm sorry. How often do you guys do fly dates so when you're when you're not playing in Vegas? Is it always a fly date? Not always, but majority of times, yeah. We would go probably a week when we're not here. Sometimes we'll leave directly from here uh-huh. after the gig. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it it varies. You know. And and when you're doing the fly dates, are the venues providing you like an amp and everything? Oh yeah, everything's on the rack. Uh huh. And uh, I'm they- to the point to where all I take is my my pedal. Oh, okay. On oh, the flight dates, are you still using the Mesa Lone Star, or are you are you using a different amp? I, I always request the Lone Star, but um, if they don't have it, it'll be the rectifier, maybe uh-huh. an arm. Have you ever tried any of the uh, like the Kempers or anything like that? The, the not with the boys, but I have played on the amp when we were well when I was playing on this church gig, uh, subbing here in Vegas, and it was a beautiful amp. Uh-huh. In fact, I, I um, a monitor guy, he did. Mentioned those campers to us. He was trying to get us to, you know, just get them on stage, put them on the writer. At that time, I had never tried it, but yeah. I see why I recommended it. When you were growing up, did you take lessons, or, or did you just pick it up all by yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much strictly ear. I did try to go to school, but by that time, I was too far gone by ear to, to really pay attention. You know, uh-huh. yeah. my teacher would play it before he, you know, as he's reading, he'd play it, and I'd pick it up by ear. And sure. <laughs> that was too far ago. <laughs> yeah. When you're playing with the boys, do you guys ever share the bill with um, with other like bigger bands? Oh yeah, definitely. Lot, lots of times we'll go out with uh, Baby Sage. Uh huh. Yeah. Any any gu- other guitar players that uh, you kind of admire that you've been playing with? As far as in the other yeah, bands, oh, in the other bands. Oh yeah, a lot of those, a lot of the bands have <clears throat> have very guitar players. I can't really remember their names. Uh huh. A lot of the artists do have nice, awesome guitar players. When this COVID thing is over, and so you said you had some dates in August, are you guys going to do any recording? Uh, not that I've heard of. And usually they record, they usually use, like, who's ever producing. Uh huh. Um, I guess they usually put together. Sure, they'll get the musicians the, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll use the tracks. The producer will provide the tracks and then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. It means a lot. No problem. I appreciate you. You're reaching out to me. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again, Jay. Yeah, thank you, Johnny. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks for listening to Have Guitar, Will Travel. You can catch up on all the things I'm doing at thedeadlies.com. And I'm on all the social media platforms as well. And please support Vintage Guitar and all the wonderful things they do because they do many, many wonderful things for us guitar players. Thanks. Please subscribe. Please tell a friend. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye.